Yeah, like you, have, you guys have been talking, there hasn't been a big surprise on where they move the dots. But I think the one thing to focus on is that there are still nine members looking for two more Fed hikes uh, by the end of the year. Uh, that's what I was more surprised by than anything. So that they are hoping that this is a bit more short term and that over the, the six months period that they can start to normalize rates. Well, in other words, uh, Yellen did also point out that Ju the July rate hike is certainly not off the table. Would you say, though, that the hurdles for that next goalpost are higher this time around? I think so. After the last uh, payrolls numbers that were disappointing, that did push up the July rate hike hurdle. Uh, so this upcoming payroll numbers is extremely important. So at SAB, what we're looking for is that it needs to be closer towards 200,000, and that will allow for the July rate hike. But if you get this 150,000, then I think they have to wait for September, uh, one more payroll numbers to come out for them to hike in the September scenario. Sean, I think the other interesting thing here is that Brexit has certainly come into the picture. And Yellen going so far as to say it could have consequences for global markets. Walk me through how you think this kind of rhetoric may affect emerging markets' currencies. Well, I think she's right if we do get a big vote uh, for Brexit. So if you, I think you need something over a five percentage point for Brexit winners, so something over 55%. And if you get something like that, then it would be a big risk-off scenario and emerging markets would be sold off. So emerging market currencies would sell off uh, as well as the equity markets. That's interesting. Let me, let's talk strategy for a little bit. Align yourself with liquidity. That's a strategy that I've heard a lot of analysts talking about. How does this work in uh, this particular instance? Yeah, I think liquidity is always a major input into how you trade and the strategy. But it matters much more when you have these big event risks coming up. And you see in the last couple of weeks, there's not that much liquidity. So you have a couple of buyers or sellers, and it moves the market quite a bit. So you have to be extremely careful of that. But it is a short-term risk, so that once you do get over Brexit and things start to normalize, then liquidity isn't such a concern. So it's a, it is just short-term is what you need to keep in mind. Right. Now, Sean, before I let you go, there is also the Bank of Japan to keep watch on today. I mean, policymakers there have given us plenty of clues that more action is on the way. And by that, we mean, of course, more stimulus. Uh, the yen, as far as the Bank of Japan is concerned, is going in the wrong direction. What's the best case scenario for you here? Yeah, so Bank of Japan, of course, they're probably not going to do anything because they do want to keep their powder dry. Uh, so more towards July and September is the likely scenario for easing. Now, what they are really worried about is Brexit taking dollar yen lower and taking it below 105 and towards 100. If it breaks 100, that is extremely painful and it could go back to 80 uh, where we were where for four years ago. And that's exactly what the Bank of Japan doesn't want. So I think when the yen starts heading towards 100, then I think you can see either intervention or the Bank of Japan having an emergency meeting or something to ease policy to keep dollar yen higher above 100. Well, Central Bank certainly taking the spotlights this week. Sean Yokoda from SEB, we appreciate your insights. Thank you.